the interaction between the former chalet users group now greenhill community trust and the council and that you know and make clear that at, at no point in that process were we um as weymouth bay sea swimmers cic and me as a director of weymouth bay sea swimmers no point were we consulted okay and that i think is is the crux of the problem and and that that existed and why as a director of weymouth bay sea swimmers with the approval of the board because we have meetings about this and we've kept each other brief the whole time um on behalf of the company i pursued something approaching my own or our own investigation of it and out of that investigation wrote to the council on numerous occasions over the last two years and this is what happened so i will go through the document i have with you and I'm going to share my screen now. Um, and I'll try and go through it quickly. I might jump over bits if I I think, you know, having heard what, we, what we've just heard, if I think, you know, they're not so relevant. But I want to state for the record here that these are facts. They are all verifiable. Uh, they're all in the public domain and um you know this is this is uh the honest opinion of me and of the board of uh weymouth bay sea swimmers cic okay so these are these are, this is just a timeline of facts or, or some information so our legal advice when we were evicted said we've been evicted unlawfully okay and it happened because our solicitor said our occupation of the premises was not given due consideration which is a legal term by the council and we arguably and he thought we did enjoyed security of tenure so the council by awarding a lease to greenhill community trust and not directly engaging with us resulted in us being evicted and that was through no fault of our own okay we discovered during the process that two of the Green Hill Community Trust directors had strong links to the council. One told one of our directors that she used to run the beach chalets for the council. We found this surprising and began looking into it, as you would expect, you know, if you've been kicked out of somewhere and then someone tells you that and it all sounds a bit strange, then you look into it. So we sent an FIR, FOI response to, uh, to the council, which confirmed that the, the uh, a director of GCT in question, Ms. Janice Chalker, worked for the council and its property services department. It also confirmed that the opportunity to acquire a lease for the beach chalets had not been re-advertised after members had rejected the uh, GCT's proposal the first time. So this practice was somewhat euphemistically described in the final report as non-standard in the council's uh, investigation okay uh when we had initially raised these issues with the council chief executive in 2019 we had suggested from an outsider's perspective in an email that i sent that this situation could possibly hint at corruption um and he quickly responded that we would be receiving an offer from the council and the offer of some premises the name the, the and it was the old toilets by the pleasure pier came very quickly from another director however that same director had only a few weeks previously told us in writing that he had scoured the council's property portfolio looking for suitable premises for the swimmers and drawn a complete blank. we thought that was a bit strange so we declined to accept this offer as a matter of principle and we had a discussion about that and it was a very hard decision and you know we could have said uh okay we'll have that thank you very much and then you know tried to do something with that building the old toilets on the end of the pleasure pit but we felt that as a matter of principle we weren't comfortable with the way it was reached and the, the events that had gone before it and we declined it on principle so uh, we put a timeline of events together with evidence and sent it to the police. The police invited me to give a statement and they failed to produce a statement after meeting me, which was I found a bit strange. When I questioned this, I received a call saying they were going to take no further action. 
I asked them to put their decision in writing with an explanation. A number of officers of increasing rank said they would do this, but they did not. We found this rather strange. So upon this suggestion of, uh, upon his suggestion, so upon John's suggestion, who's just spoken, John, Councillor John Oral, uh, we lodged a complaint with the council. Then the monitoring officer of the council, which is like the sort of legal head, he reports to the central government and Mr. Jonathan Mayer, who is ostensibly separate from the council, but uh, looks after all their legal affairs and is like the sort of, you know, internal affairs guy, said the police had asked the council to investigate the matter. The police didn't tell us that. They, the council said the police had asked them to investigate. Then Miss Grace Evans, head of legal services for the council, agreed the scope of the investigation with us on the 9th of April 2020. And the the this is uh you can see there there's a uh, the basis of the scope of the investigation items one and two officer and or member current or former with way with Portland Borough Council criminal offence of misconduct in public office that's what they look into so item three they're going to look into and I've highlighted it because this is the this is a very important point the civil complaint of unlawful eviction okay and that's why I mentioned at the start that that the problem we had was that we weren't consulted and we had no say in what happened to us and Greenhill Community Trust and the council just got on with deciding on this lease for them that then resulted in them evicting us so we weren't we weren't you know and and that wouldn't have happened without the council not or someone there deciding not to talk to us um and then there's a, a they looked into a criminal possible criminal offense of bribery re um offering us the thing on the end of the pleasure pier rather swiftly um and then on the on the 20th of april 2020 the head of legal services wrote to us this is uh, miss evans in a reply to our request on a very specific matter and this again is important in relation to council governance and and i i i'm kind of interested in council governance because recently trevor bevins from the echo wrote a thing about some uh councillors in west dorset uh, alleging that dorset council were acting undemocratically and i think uh this is relevant in that context and that's why sam from the echo is here okay um so miss evans wrote i'd not forgotten the issues you raised relating to the governance and operation of the cic and its directors but i apologize if i was not sufficiently clear about them in my initial email below and and then she goes on items one and three in your email i can look into the issues raised about the cic although my remit as an officer of the council is limited to the activities and decisions of the council at the time so that's the management committee making the decision so my investigation will be in that context the council and i have no legal power no remit to investigate the cic which is true as a, as a legal entity not part of our, our arms length to the council so as part of my so this is crucial so as part of my investigation into misconduct i will look at due diligence carried out by the council due diligence is looking at into who you're dealing with know your client know your who you're going into an agreement with and their names and their backgrounds i.e the directors of a company so due diligence carried out by the council and whether cic governance directorships should have led to concerns being raised internally or to any other regulatory body i will make specific reference to due diligence and your concerns about directorship and conflict of interest in that part of my investigation so that was the assurance we were given re conflict of interest involving any directors of green hill community trust okay so on the 5th of june we received a list of those to be interviewed you can see the names there um important one i'd say is martin hamilton who was the director that we dealt with when we uh got access to that part of the beach chalets okay then on the 3rd of July, 2020, Miss Evans told us she decided to switch responsibility for the investi investigation to the Southwest Audit Partnership. And these are the internal auditors of Dorset Council and formerly also the internal auditors of Weymouth and Portland Borough Council at the time that the events in question were happening. So when the management committee of April, 2017 made the decision to award a lease to Greenhill Community Trust, Southwest Audit Partnership were the auditors of Weymouth and Portland Borough Council and would have, you know, 
some kind of um, uh, responsibility for the uh, democratic processes of the council at that time. Now, the council sent us their six-page report on the investigation. Oh, no, I just missed a bit. Hold on. Da, 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 da. And I said, so uh, when we were talking about this, uh, I pointed out that the that, 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 that Southwest Audit were possibly conflicted anyway because of that in terms of doing the investigation. And we stated our concern and we asked for an independent third party to oversee their work. So we wanted another layer of third party sort of oversight that was independent on the auditor who supposedly was independent okay um now the council sent us their six page report on the investigation on the 22nd of march 2021 so not long ago and it completely exonerated all parties okay we have to take that on face value and but we can still you know look at the report and go okay what about this? What about that? What about that? Anything? Try and clear it up. And and why I'm I'm doing this and I'm going through this in this detail because I want to put it to bed. I want you know I've spent two years doing this. I've spent a lot a lot of time on it. I I really really want to see the back of this thing. But I do think and and the the other members of the board think it's important that this kind of stuff comes out into the open and gets the uh, a bit of sunlight on it. It was sunlight. Someone said sunlight is the best antiseptic. Um, we also asked Mr. Mayor. Um, so we got the report and then we identified some inconsistencies, you see, in 13 between what the council said they would do at the start of the investigation and what they ended up doing and reporting upon at the end. So we asked Mr. Mayor, the monitoring officer, and we think most ordinary members of the taxpaying and democratically governed public will consider this, this important too. We asked him a very important question and he refused to ask the auditor our question. And then when we fully disclosed the information, which you can see below, we had received, which you know, he still refused to ask the auditor or answer the question. Now, the question there is, were all of the members of the March 2017 Management Committee fully informed regarding the name and previous employment with the council of one of the directors of Green Hill Community Trust, namely Miss Chalker. And that, you know, Mr. Mayor refused to pass that on and refused to comment on it. Uh, so these are the questions we asked in an email to Mr. Mayor. And there's not much more of this, so, so don't worry. Um, and two years to create a six page report on the investigation and then we had these concerns, and I will go through them. You'll see there's only another couple of pages, and I'll whiz through them quickly. Well, we asked, why weren't we informed of the unilateral decision not to investigate allegation number three? And you'll see at the top there, allegation number three was civil complaint of unlawful eviction. So and, and Councillor Oral pointed this out when, when he saw the, the report. What was the point of of two years of investigation if the core issue of our eviction was not in the end investigated when at the start they said they were going to investigate it and, and do something about it or, or take a decision. So they just didn't do it. The report says there was a meeting with the head of legal on the 1st of July 2020, that's Miss Evans, and she's the deputy to Jonathan Met, at which the decision was made not to look into that allegation, but no one told us. I put it is now March 2021 and we've just been informed by you that the matter is closed. Please can you show us where that decision involved us and was shared with us prior to this week? No answer. Next question we put to him. Why was Martin Hamilton not interviewed? Surely he was important because he was the officer we dealt with when, then we, then when we got access to the property. Also, the report says they were unable to contact him from his HR record. Now... <laughs> I put here, he's the CEO of Newcastle Underline Borough Council. Uh, I don't need Martin Hamilton's HR record or access to it to know where he is and how to get hold of him. And, and John Selgren, who's currently at the council, did a job swap seemingly, you know, or, or, or came from Newcastle under Lyme to Dorset Council and Martin Hamilton went the other way. So surely someone should know how to get hold of Martin Hamilton. 
so we weren't told of this while they were doing the investigation and it's a mystery to us why Martin Hamilton was not questioned as part of the investigation. Uh, next question that we put to them. The report says Swap couldn't talk to Alderman Hutchings because he was dead. Fair enough. And we are deeply sorry for the fact that Mr. Hutchings didn't survive the last year. Um, but I added in the question, but to the best of our knowledge, Janice Chalker and the other directors of GCT are still alive. If Mr. Hutchings was deemed worthy of a conversation as part of the investigation, why wasn't Miss Chalker? It seemingly doesn't make any sense to mention Mr. Hutchings in this context and not talk to the others. I'll leave that for you to ponder. Next question. The report acknowledges that the disposal process was not standard, but the independent legal, but independent legal advice said it was. Whose legal advice was it? The council has in-house legal expertise to draw up leases. Where is the legal advice? Why weren't Weymouth Bay Sea Swimmers informed and included at the time? Which is precisely why our solicitor said we'd been unlawfully evicted. This seems to be a reference to the fact that the opportunity was not advertised and no other stakeholders outside of a small group of officers and GCT directors were involved in the process. Why is this? Again, no response. Next question. A member of the management committee, which the report relies upon heavily to affirm that the decision was made in public and was transparent, has gone on the record to say he did not know about Ms. Chalker's involvement and employment history. And this goes back to um, Ms. Evans's statement in an email saying, I will make specific reference to due diligence and your concerns about directorship and conflict of interest in that part of my investigation. Now, in the report, they say, oh, yes, the, the Ms. Chalker was um, not working for the council at the time, blah, 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 okay. But we now know she worked for property services uh, and also told one of our directors she ran the chalets and the council have admitted that she did have direct involvement in running the chalets. So the member of the committee, the management committee, was Andy Blackwood, and we got hold of Andy Blackwood, and this is what he said. This is from a messenger chat. And he says, I was certainly not aware that the property services employee was a director of the Green Hill Community Trust. I can't recall whether officers used delegated powers or not. I wish I could give more, more details. So one of the members of the committee who voted to award the lease was not fully aware of all the information and a possible conflict of interest. Yet the council's investigation exonerates everyone even though they said they would look into possible conflicts of interest and the directorships of the uh people in green hill community trust and any you know possible conflicts of interest so andy blackwood at the time made a statement to the echo in which he said he was concerned about this but he he did vote it but vote for it and and it, and it went through but he didn't know so the, 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 the question that, that we would have is that how is this, is this democracy uh, in a transparent and open fashion? Or why, why didn't, you know, if, if Andy Blackwood didn't know about the fact that one of the Green Hill Community Trust directors was a former employee of property services and had run and been involved in running the chalets, did the others know? I mean, either way, any way you look at it, it seems to be problematic in terms of governance and democracy. Uh, the pros I put here, the, the report, next question, concludes that Ms. Chalker had no power to influence decisions concerning the award of the lease, but they do say she ran the waiting list and worked for property services. Our information and what she told one of our directors was that she ran the chalets for the council. In any case, just running the waiting list would mean she had a long working relationship with the boss of property services, Mr. Northcott, who was obviously someone who had some responsibility and he was interviewed in the investigation. Was she his secretary, as some have alleged? There must be some record of her precise duty somewhere, even if it was only running the list. She had direct involvement in the management of the property. If she was his secretary and or handled the maintenance of the chalets, then she was directly connected to the escalating costs that caused her boss to recommend to members that the chalets be disposed of. 
that was the reason in the management process that the chalets were being disposed of, that they were costing too much to run for the council. There's no detail in this report and these most on these most important matters. Why is that? So, and Mr. Mayor has not responded to that question. Uh, we're getting near the end. The report says there is evidence to support there is uh, there is evidence to support a lack of opportunity to make a profit. Uh, we'd say, well, what is it? Where is it? Why would a group of pensioners take on a liability of this nature and all the supposed risk involved? The truth is there is no risk because the lease is cosmetically repairing, not structurally. So the council should, you know, still still shoulder the risk. The structure is the thing that's the risk and the council still has that. So basically, if the directors of GCT were to pay themselves and uh, reduce the cost of the painting and decorating, uh, they could pay themselves from the surplus and it would be, you know, tantamount to a bit of a pension top up, which would be nice. Um, yeah, we're not saying that's what is happening, but, you know, these questions need to be asked and they need to be answered. The Chalet Users Group, next question, were people who had chalet licenses? Did Miss Chalker have also have a chalet license? Did Alderman Hutchings have a license? How long for? Is there a record of it? But there's no mention of this in the council's report. The report says there's no evidence of bribery concerning the offer of alternative accommodation to Weymouth Bay Sea Swimmers. But that kind of ignores the evidence that we provided less than 48 hours after I used the word corrupt in an email to CEO Matt Prosser. He received a one-line email from, oh, I received a one-line email from Mr. Prosser saying he'd get an offer to me very soon from Mr. Piles. And then by email, Mr. Piles offered us the alternative building at the end of the pier. But this was just a few weeks after Mr. Piles had written to say he looked through their property portfolio and found nothing suitable. So seemingly something appeared uh, as if by magic. At no point were we asked for our input or would, who would, who would uh, investigate and who would oversee the investigation. So we specifically asked that another monitoring officer not be used to oversee it as it could leave the council open to accusations of bias. You simply told us, this is to Mr. Mayor, that you'd instructed a firm of solicitors but gave us no name of the person overseeing, although you now admit in an email yesterday that you knew of Mr. Heath, this is the solicitor, that oversaw the uh, South West Audit Partnerships investigation, their report, and he, Mr. Mayor said, he is someone I have been aware of in the sector, but at most he is someone whom I would recognize if, for instance, we attended the same conference. So the question is, so why didn't you tell us when you hired him that after we had pleaded with you not to keep it in your orbit? So basically, we asked Mr. Mayor to appoint someone completely independent. He suggested in an email that he could appoint another monitoring officer. We said, no, 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 you can't appoint someone who's in your little club of monitoring officers. And it turns out Mr. Heath was the monitoring officer for Southampton uh, Council, you know, a neighboring council's monitoring officer overseeing the Southwest Audit, who were the auditors away with the Portland Borough Council, overseeing their investigation. You know, it just doesn't really sit well, does it? Um, so um, at no point, you know, and this is, this is, this is so, so, so looking at it all, and this is what we said to Mr. Mayor, in-house is the term we would apply to this investigation and report. The investigating auditor was the auditor of Weymouth and Portland Borough Council when these matters were being acted out. It is the current auditor of Dorset Council. The independent overseer was known and a fellow monitoring officer of a neighboring local authority. Two of the beneficiaries and their dependents of the £110,000 contract, the lease, were a former councillor and a former council employee who used to administer the asset in question, all clearly in-house. So in conclusion, to take two years to produce six pages of completely flawed investigation report, which crucially and inexplicably, inexplicably admits the key issue of the unlawful eviction of Weymouth Basis from the CIC as a result of the complete lack of due consideration for our occupancy, and the welfare of our members and, and throughout all of this and, and, and other members of the board were, and John, John Oral will, will, will tell you, I have steadfastly pushed the welfare of our members, okay? 
I swim because I suffer from mental illness, as do many of our members. And I put, so the welfare of our members is, to be frank, a shocking disgrace, and we can only guess as the reasons for such an incompetent process and outcome. Finally, and you'll be grateful that we've reached the end, in our frustration and disappointment in this outcome, after all of our efforts to get to the bottom of the matter, we failed to notice, and this is me talking to you now, we failed to notice, this is a mistake I made, that the final report on the investigation makes absolutely no mention of the council's codes of conduct or due diligence. And as we quoted the head of legal services earlier writing, so as part of my investigation into misconduct, I will look at the due diligence carried out by the council and whether CRC governments, blah, 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 blah. I will make oh, yeah, reference to this. So this important aspect of the investigation, due diligence, code of conduct, um, conflicts of interest seems to have been completely ignored why so there you go and i'll let a few people ask me if they have any questions and i'm not going to answer um too much detail because i deliberately read that and, and the report because i wanted it to be accurate um, and I didn't want anything misconstrued. So if, if anyone has a, a non-contentious question or something, then put your hand up. Okay, Alison, go for it. Hello. Um, I'm fairly new to the Weymouth Bay Sea Swimming Group. Um, yeah. And I just want to uh, express my utmost appreciation and admiration for the stickability of the directors and everybody else involved in that. That's a very unpleasant process to have to go through. And this might appear to be a little <coughs> sorry, but I think it just echoes, you know, what's happening uh, with, the, with the government at the moment. And that if we have any trickle down of anything from government down to the people, it's that idea that you can get away with not investigating yourselves properly with impunity and i think the council's behavior has been absolutely disgraceful i really do to you uh, and i just thank you jason and everybody else because that's an enormous task that you've undertaken and i'm just so sad that the council has chosen to be so disregarding of something particularly when we know that there's a massive increase in sea swimmers and open water swimmers partly to do with the with the mental health support that it offers to people and i think it's shameful in you know at the end of uh, 12 months of covid that the council has completely disregarded that aspect of it as well as everything else and, and also thanks to john Orrell for everything he's done thank you very much alison i appreciate that and and, uh, and all the directors of the of the of the cic appreciate that and i'm sure john does you know, it's 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 been a difficult thing. It has been really difficult, and um, you know, but but we 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 pride ourselves on being a principled group of people and a principled organisation, um, and 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 we we just felt that we couldn't let it go because there were too many holes in what we were being told. Thanks a lot for that. Right, who 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 has we got? Um, so Alison, we got. Um, Andrea would like to say something. Andrea? Yeah, I just wanted to echo what Alison said and say thank you, Jason, for all your hard work because you have steadfastly been banging on that door and just not accepting any of the um, answers that they have given you. You kept on and on and on. So I just want to say thank you because, you know, it has been very difficult and lots of other people would have um, given up, but you've just carried on. So, you know, we do... We do appreciate it. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Okay, we've got Nick. Would you like to say something? Yeah, the thing that gets me a bit is that I was at the planning meeting with you, Jason, in September of 2019. Mm. The chap got up and spoke on behalf of the um, Green Hill Trust and said that the, the swimming hunt was an eyesore, which I don't think it really was. It came down in pretty quick order after that, after we lost our, after they got their planning permission to demolish it. 
And yet you look at it now, and it's now more of an eyesore than it was when we used it. Oh. Um, roughly sometime last year, I, I just happened to take a walk down there, and there was a guy, they, they were using it, the, there was a guy in there with Chippy doing some work, and I had to chat, chat to him, very nice bloke. And he said, we're going to get onto this eventually. We're actually, at the moment, we're refurbishing the beach huts, and then we're, we're moving our way along. But there's no sign of that. And it's just a, a total mess, and they've done nothing with it. And I just think that's such a, such a bad type of faith, really. Yeah, yeah. And also, well, I, I, thank, I, I, thank you for what you've done, Jason, as well. Th thank you, Nick. Thanks. Uh, you know, there are, there are some of us who, who kind of steer clear of going down that end when we swim because we don't like looking up and seeing <laughs> the boards <laughs> on the balcony <laughs> where where we used to congregate and have nice chats and warm up after swims. You know? <laughs> so it's it's been traumatic in that respect, yeah. And, and I take your point, you know. It got knocked down in, in, in extreme haste and nothing was done to, to, to make good that area okay sam from the echo would you like to ask a question yeah um miss chalker does they <laughs> um obviously that's a bit of a crux in all this um does anyone know or can point me in the direction of what organization she's now working with is she still uh, yeah just that really personally i don't know does uh, does anyone else know? I I think she's probably retired, and her only um, business, as such, is with the Green Hill Community Trust. Okay, all right. Um, also, just just to you, Jason, would it be okay if after the meeting, yeah. if you sent over the FOI request, and obviously that text that you were just showing us yeah. on the, um, on the video, and if you could show, if you could send this video as well, I, I'm aware yeah, that you're yeah, recording yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you everything, mate. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else would like to say anything? Yeah, there was um there was one other thing. We did do an FOI on the the lease arrangement that the Green Hill Trust had with the council and Weymouth Bay Suet Sea Swimmers were actually listed as part of that lease agreement. We were actually mentioned there, um, but it seems to be completely ignored. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point, Andrea. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's move on from uh, the distressing stuff, and <laughs> let's go on to uh, a quick bit of business resolutions. The following resolutions are set to be proposed at the AGM. Uh, Andrea can carry on talking because she has been the treasurer and a, a, a highly regarded and esteemed colleague in the treasury. Um, I'd like to say that Andrea is not an accountant. She's not a bookkeeper. She's a swimmer and a digital educator. And um, she's taken to doing the accounts and dealing with that. And I know from being non a non-accountant that it, it kind of, it messes with your with your with your mind. It's it's not something that you can take to quite easily. But Andrea is going to step down after this. We we'll, we we'll talk about that. In a but thank you so much, Andrea, for all of your time and support, doing the accounts, being a lovely person, and also supporting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I do. Okay. So have I got to do the accounts now then. <laughs> 